All right, welcome back to the Canadian Gun Vault behind the vault door. My name is Mark Morelli, and this week's podcast episode is going to be regarding a, uh, a subject that I see uh, people asking a lot of questions about. How do I get my spouse into shooting? You know, uh, I've been watching the forums for years, and uh, certainly I've seen a long list of complaints from men saying that they, uh, you know, don't have spouses that are into shooting, and it creates a ton of static. I mean, like, you want to go buy that new favorite gun, you're going to have to barter, uh, you know, definitely, you know, wheel and deal. You you might have to, you know, finish that kitchen, you know, or uh, refinish, you know, the... uh, the new playroom uh, before you get a chance or an opportunity to own that uh, next favorite gun. Well, you know, certainly it makes it a lot easier if your spouse is into shooting. And this seems to be the stumbling point for a lot of guys. I don't know if you don't want your women at the range or, you know, maybe you feel like it's your sanctuary and, you know, you don't want to bring your spouse there for the, you know, all those guys out there that, you know, are in a rush to go to work uh, to get away from their wives, certainly in their uh, downtime and uh, when they're trying to relax. I know some people that uh, don't want to have their spouses with them, but for the people that do, and for the people that really enjoy a good partnership and uh, all the rewards that come with uh, really getting along with your spouse, uh, that you want to have them actually out at the range shooting, this is what I'm going to recommend. Uh, because a lot of people have asked me, you know, like, how can I get my wife into shooting? Like, I mean, I really, I really want to see my girlfriend shoot a gun, but, you know, like, you know, she's nervous, she's scared. Uh, the first thing I'll tell you is this. Uh, definitely don't hand them your favorite gun. I mean, if you've been shooting for years and you got a favorite rifle, uh, chances are it's not going to be a 22. You know, uh, don't hand your uh, 30-odd six bolt action hunting rifle to your wife. Uh, not show her how to <laughs> handle it correctly. Uh, sit her down on a bench stationary and have her pull the trigger. She will never want to come to the range again. She will do it once. She will go, holy shit, that hurt, and never again show up on the line. And if you want to scare her off, great. That's a fantastic idea. But uh, my recommendation is, is that if you really, really want to see her come out again and enjoy herself, that's not the way to do it. And if you're going to uh, stick a large caliber uh, handgun into their hands for the first time and try and have them hit paper at 25 yards, that's, that's not going to work either. You know, uh, shooting handguns is a skill that develops over time. Uh, it certainly is a, is a discipline that is learned and, and you know, through developing uh, good technique and form Uh, starting off that far away from a target again not something i would recommend and uh, so for the people that have asked me this question repetitively i'm going to do this podcast and this is what i suggest Uh, get yourself a couple of 22s grab yourself a nice 22 rifle and a, uh, a nice 22 pistol. The uh, Ruger Mark threes and, and fours, they come apart a little bit easier, are uh, definitely solid choices. You know, grab yourself a, a 1022. Seems to be a, a fan favorite, you know, for a first uh, semi-automatic handgun. Uh, you know, you wanna, if you want to do something a little bit different and uh, keep it interesting, maybe you want to grab yourself an old uh, vintage 22 pump. Uh, always make great choices, you know, like a little gallery gun. Uh, I find that those are really popular. Uh, with the ladies once they uh, once they start shooting, uh, and, I, and I'll tell you this: as as a guy, I would say this without any reservation that I have seen women outshoot men time and time again. Once they get it and they get a feel for it, it becomes uh, something of a of a comical um, item for me to watch uh, spouses outshoot their husbands, and and it's it's always interesting to see the reaction on men's faces you know the more secure guys will definitely sit there and say hmm, she did it again i i would suggest that you probably uh, you know have to be pretty secure in your masculinity to have your uh, your wife or your girlfriend best you on the firing line with a better score but uh if you want to show your spouse how to shoot uh, correctly and if you don't want to scare the bejesus out of them then what i'm going to recommend is that you get yourself a nice 22 rifle and a nice 22 handgun uh, 22 caliber handgun and get them uh close uh, and i would s- suggest you start with you know the fundamentals uh, showing them the correct sight picture <clears throat> that they should be seeing um, you know draw it on a piece of paper let them know what it is that they should be looking at uh you know when they're when they're aiming the gun and uh you know definitely make sure they're using the correct eye uh, you know, when they're aiming down the barrel of that rifle, uh, I've seen some really funny things occur on the line. And, and when people don't know, they don't know. Uh, to show them uh, the correct way to stand, to hold the rifle, 
always beginning by you know showing them the mechanics and the operational controls and the safety is important uh, starting uh, first and foremost safety first you know have them point the gun in a safe direction at all times uh, have them keep their finger outside the trigger guard unless they're planning on shooting and everything else will flow from that uh, you can make just about any mistake you want on the firing line uh, as long as the gun is pointed in the correct direction and is uh, you know on safe and or your fingers outside the trigger guard you can avoid 999 problems out of a thousand right away but once you get them used to that sight picture and you've shown them how to you know load a gun uh, it's important to have them dry fire a couple of times I know some people say don't dry fire a 22 I'm thinking you know they mean repetitive dry firing but I mean if you want to want to show them uh, how to aim and fire a gun uh, let them know that when they pull the trigger that the sight picture shouldn't be disturbed so to have them aiming you know at, at a fairly close range if your local range will allow you to shoot at you know 10 or 15 meters with a rifle at paper uh, take advantage of that you know if you got a private side range like a competition range like some of the ranges in our uh, in our area here have uh, you know bring them up close and you know have them hit that bullseye several times and then gradually move them backwards you know, and once they get used to the idea of that noise, you know, coming out of that gun when they pull the trigger uh, and, and get them past that, you know, perhaps initial uh, shock uh, to your system, hearing that bang when you just move your finger just a little bit after the gun is loaded. Uh, once you get past that, you, be, you might be surprised at uh, how well your girlfriend or fiance or wife does. And if you can get them, uh, you know, comfortable with the idea of, you know, shooting a gun, and the concept of shooting a gun uh, and gradually move them backwards um, you know as long as they stay you know on paper and you you keep them in the bullseye area starting from five feet working back to ten uh, you know you you may find that they really will start to enjoy it if they can you know um, start to feel that sense of competition you know that sometimes develops when people get good at things so, I mean, if you start at five and work your way back to, you know, 15 meters and uh, now you're, you know, shooting a 22 caliber handgun and a 22 caliber rifle and uh, she's starting to feel comfortable, you know, you may want to move on to uh, something a little bit larger. And that and that's probably the single biggest mistake I, I see people make is they they move up progressively a little too fast. And so if you can get your uh, get your wife, you know, perhaps going from a 22 to, say, uh, you know, like a 380. You know, uh, you know, or 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 even a light-powered uh, nine, if you home load, uh, you know, to gradually work them upwards through that power scale, you know, building your way up to, you know, larger caliber, more powerful handguns. Uh, you know, you're going to get better results that way. And 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 be patient, please, guys. Don't don't yell at your wife. I mean, uh, if she turns around sideways and you know points the gun at you, I think that you know that warrants maybe an authoritarian sort of uh, you know. Um, you know, instruction to point it away from you. I, I get it, but like, if if she's not hitting the target right away, I see guys making this mistake. You know, they they start to get a little bit impatient and they start to yell. You know, some guys actually will start to yell, which which completely ruins the experience. <clears throat> you know, I'm sure for a lot of women, and uh, you know, and, I, and I've seen guys on the line. You know, if they hand their favorite gun, which might be a, you know a large caliber Magnum pistol, to their wives, and they get scared, and or they get yelled at, and you know they put the guns down and go back to the car and wait till their husbands are finished. And believe me, unless that's what you want, that'll probably be the last time she comes out under the line, fellas. So if you can be patient. And you can, uh, you know, work closely with her. It can actually be a really great uh, experience to share together, and to, you know, kind of develop that uh, that sense of, <clears throat> uh, you know, bonding and doing something together as a couple. You know, I see I see a lot of couples on the line. I love it. It's uh, it's fantastic, and it's it's always good to see, um, you know, the ladies that can keep up. Uh, sometimes actually excel and go right past their their men in terms of performance. I love watching that. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun. So now, if you've gradually built them upwards, uh, you know, and into categories of pistols that are much larger, you know, bring them over to the steel. You know, uh, blow up some balloons. You know, make it, make it fun. You know, uh, get yourself some targets that, uh, you know, that are reactive. I, I always tell people, paper's great, uh, but steel, steel just sells people on the idea of shooting for life. 
And if you blow up some balloons and you get that instant gratification, you know, that one feels when you see that color balloon pop or you, you know, uh, got a nice fresh piece of white painted steel and you hear that, that loud ringing noise, you know, when you hit it, uh, that's when you're going to get them hooked. And, uh, and certainly that next favorite purchase uh, that you're looking to make at your local gun store might not be as difficult a sell uh, as it once was. And I mean, if you, you know, if you're feeling really, you know, kind of, uh, you know, uh, adventurous, you know, if you've got one of those wives that doesn't uh, doesn't mind trying something, you know, a little more exciting, then uh, you know, once they, you've built them up to large magnum uh, or large caliber pistols, then get them on the magnums. Like that's that's definitely something that uh, I definitely think everybody should try at least once you know and 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 it's in those moments that all those things that you've taught them before the fundamentals become that much more important you know to uh, you know to have them roll their shoulders you know upwards and to lock their arms out and to to have a firm grip on that gun i mean it's it's really important then you know when you're shooting pistols that are that much more powerful than standard loads uh that those techniques become um you know really important and you know if you can if you can shake uh you know i always do it i, I shake i shake a girl's hand and i squeeze you know to just just to kind of give them the sensation of how hard they should be kind of squeezing the pistol you don't want to death grip it but at the same time you know you, you definitely got to hold on to you know 357 magnum and 44s and uh you know i, I get no pleasure watching uh youtube videos where guys hand like you know 50 caliber desert eagles to their girlfriends and they get smacked off the nose i mean i like anybody else i go oh you know and wince and look away but i mean uh, i'll watch those videos but i mean it's 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 not a, it's not a friendly thing to do to somebody uh if you're gonna hand somebody a magnum caliber uh you know pistol you definitely want to make sure that they're prepared for it. and and all that comes with uh, you know, proper instruction and uh, the development of those those good techniques and, and good form uh, that you learn with the 22s. And so if you can get uh, your girlfriend comfortable enough to shoot magnum pistols, uh, if she's not recoil shy, if you learn that through, you know, the uh, gradually ascending scale through the uh, different calibers, uh, I'll tell you guys, you'll, uh, you'll have a girlfriend or a wife that'll be hooked for life and she'll be coming to the range with you every week. Anyway, that's, uh, that's about all we have time for tonight on this week's podcast and uh, episode of Canadian Gun Vaults Behind the Vault Door. We hope you've had a good evening and uh, a great summer. Have a good night, folks.